In this video, we're going to start to create our rock assets. Let's first start with our large rock. So as we showed in the unity blocking scene, we had the large cliff rock, which was about 90 units. So I've already set up my distance tool here to register 90 units. And what I'm going to do now is just jump over here into my front view, and I'm just going to create a polygon cube, and I'll start to scale this up. So what I'm going to do here is uh, jump over into my vertex mode and just bring these guys up. So here you can see that I've basically uh, just blocked in this uh, large scale rock here. And so we're going to make a few more changes. Uh, let's just go in and just kind of adjust the scale, maybe something like this here. And we'll go up into um, our perspective view. I'm going to add a few subdivisions to this now. So here I'm just going to use my multi cut tool. And I'm just going to create a subdivision, just some even uh, distribution basically here. And so we'll get something like this. And now I'm going to run a smooth operation on this just to add some more resolution. So here we'll jump in and we'll run a smooth. And so this is kind of like the uh, basic shape that I'm getting thus far. And you can see that it's fitting within that 90 units. So here I'll just kind of scale it out again. And I think I'm gonna start with something like this. So this is gonna act as like my large scale rock. So now that I have this base model, what I'm gonna do is, is take this into ZBrush and, and do a sculpting pass on this. So first, uh, let me set this up so I can send this over to ZBrush. So I'm gonna take my ground plane and I'm just going to hide it for now. And let's grab a uh, hold of this uh, base mesh that we've had so far. And I'm going to just align and set my pivot point here. And then with this, uh, I'm just going to snap this here basically to the origin uh, of my grid. And so now that I have this, I'm just going to freeze all my transforms. So freeze transformations. And now I'm ready to send this over to ZBrush. So what I'm actually going to do is just utilize my Go Z option here. So here we are in ZBrush and I have the tool. And so I'm just going to bring this tool here into my document and we'll put this in edit mode and I'll hit F here just to focus this view. Now, one of the things that we're gonna run into here with this is that um, the size that we created this is gonna be a bit large. So if we come in here and check out the floor, you can see where the ZBrush floor here is pretty small. Now, what I could do in terms of brush size, so if I'm looking at my brush size here, you can see that even if I pull my brush size all the way up, it's going to still give me a small radius. Now, I could go into my preferences and my draw, and I could increase my dynamic brush scale. And that will fix my brush radius size, but it's not going to help me when I'm utilizing DynaMesh here. Because the DynaMesh resolution is going to be based on the bounding box of the subtool. So what I'll do in a situation like this is come over here to my deformation tab and I'm just gonna scale this down. So here we have one and I could just hit repeat active. So two, three. So let's say three times that we're going to scale this down. And so now I can work with my brush size and as well as my DynaMesh resolution with this new size. And then before I send this back over to Maya, I'm going to just rescale this object. So here I'm going to give this just a matte cap gray material and we can start working with this object here. So let's first start with a, a DynaMesh. So I'm going to change my resolution to around 64 and run DynaMesh. And so here I'll just quickly do just kind of like a smoothing operation on this. And I'm also just going to grab hold of my move and start to just do some broad shape changes. Here I'm kind of making some differences between the front and the back of the object that I'm working on because once I get this object into Unity, I'm going to be able to just rotate and, and scale it and reposition it and then basically kind of kitbash these kind of rock items together uh, to create more complex shapes. So I can get some extra variation when I'm actually doing something a little bit different on the front and the back.
So I'm going to go with something like this for now. So this just gets me kind of this broad shape. And then for actually sculpting my rock, I'm not actually going to add a lot of intricate detail because I'm going to let the substance that we created do all the heavy lifting, so to speak. What I'm looking for here is just creating uh, some basic silhouette shape here for this rock. And so to do this, I really only utilize just a few tools. So I utilize my clay buildup, uh, trim dynamic, and basically H polish. So here, let's start with trim dynamic. And I use this brush to define flat planes here on the object. And so, you know, what I do is I just, you know, start to use the brush, just, just trim away. It's kind of a subtractive process. And so I'm just kind of, you know, trimming away areas, defining planes. And I really let these planes just kind of almost find themselves. So as I'm kind of just trimming away, I start to find just interesting shapes. Uh, and then basically I just try to go with those shapes and I try to just uh, refine them more uh, Just anywhere that I could find or just create some interesting edges is really what I'm trying to do here in this process So here you see that I'm using the clay build up brush and this is really good to build up form And then I go back with trim dynamic and then start to trim away shape so it becomes this additive subtractive process again so I build up some interesting shape or just a mound of shape and now I'm trimming it back trying to find interesting edges and planes uh, that I can work with just overall just trying to create some variation in the shape as well as you know create some nice edges and shape to the actual rock Here I'm moving to the other side again trying to add some different variation because I'm going to just rotate and basically kit bash you know copies of this rock together and so you know if I look at it as a front and a back I can get two different variations of, of the of a rock just using the same asset. So here again is a good example where I'm trying just to define planes. Uh, here in this section, I'm just kind of smoothing out this whole area just to define some really nice edges here. And then I go onto the side, I smooth, use trim dynamic or H polish here. Uh, and again, like I said, I'm just trying to define some hard edges for this rock shape. Another technique that I'll use is the clay buildup as a subtractive state here. So it allows me to really cut in some shapes uh, that I can then go back with trim dynamic and H polish and you know start to create some planes and edges I didn't really do that too much here for this asset because I I'm not really you know so much concerned with with detail in the rock as I am just you know basic flat shape but here you know I just kind of gave that a try to see you know if I could just you know cut into the shape uh, fill it with some clay buildup and then try to smooth out some more edges and things like that
So now that I have this basic form, I'm going to decimate this. So we'll go to Z plugin, and here, let's just dock this to the right, and uh, here we'll pre-process this current tool, and I'm gonna take this, uh, I'm gonna take this value down pretty low. So uh, for here, let's just drag this guy down. Uh, let's just set this at maybe a value of about uh, 0.2, and we'll decimate the current tool. So let's take a look. This is gonna be the basic shape that we get. Again, I'm not really concerned about detail or anything like that. I just want to get a nice kind of silhouette shape here for a rock because, again, we're going to let our substance do all of the detail work. So now that I have this done, let's go back to our deformation tab. And for size, remember we scaled this down three times. So here, let's pull this up once. And now I can repeat to active two more times. And here is our object rescaled. So now, since I just used Go Z, I want to bring this back to Maya here. Uh, let's just go back to our tool palette, and I'll just hit this Go Z button. And so here we are back in Maya, and you can see that I have my large scale rock ready to go. All that's left for this is just to create some UVs. So let's rename this. Uh, here we'll call this rock underscore large. I'll take uh, our base mesh here, and we'll just hide this for now and also we'll hide our distance tool and like I said here's our rock and we can start to uh, go through the process of uh, laying out some UVs for this. Now there's a couple areas here that uh, I think I might fix here on the vertices so here I'm just going to grab hold of a tool uh, here I'll open up the uh, modeling toolkit and I'll grab my target weld tool and I'm just going to weld a couple of these vertices together. Okay, so here I've just welded a few of the vertices and now I'm ready to uh, work on the UVs. So here, let me just open up the UV texture editor and we'll just dock this here to the side. And uh, here I'm just going to uh, drop this here into my front view and I'm going to go to my UVs and just make a planar projection. Whoops, I actually got to select the object here. And so for UV, we'll just come in here and we'll make a planar projection. And this is what we're going to use for the start. And then we're going to go in and just use the unwrap tool. So first, uh, I need to select some edges here. So I'm just going to come in and just select some edges that I can use to cut UVs. So here I have uh, the UV selected, and like I said, we're going to cut these UVs. And let's go and select our UVs now, and then we're just going to run the Unfold tool. And so here I'll just select these UVs and move these to Shell. Uh, same thing with these guys, and here I'm just going to rotate. I basically just went in and split the mesh so that I basically have front and back UV Shell. And now I'll go into my edge here, and I'm just going to weld some of these guys together just to eliminate some of the seams. So I have these guys, let's do a move and sew, and then let's grab these UVs again and we'll unfold. And let's run and optimize. And now I'll just scale this down just rotate and move and I'm just going to place these UVs here into my uh, zero to one space and we're going to apply our substance and we're just going to let it tile. Now we are going to get some seams uh, across here but the idea is going to be that we take this object and you know we're going to duplicate it, rotate it, uh, scale it and basically just kit bash all of these rocks together uh, to build up a pretty complex rock shape. And when we do that, you know, it's going to become harder and harder to see the seam that we have here. 
So here I'm working on another variation of rock. This is going to be kind of my mid range rock. And so uh, I'm not doing anything different here. Same exact techniques. I started with move, uh, you know, got a broad shape. And now here I'm using the trim brush to go in and just kind of define planes uh, and edges here on the mesh. Uh, and also, as you'll see, I'll go in with the uh, clay brush build up to, you know, again, build up shapes uh, that I then kind of uh, trim back and refine with uh, trim dynamic. So here are my completed rocks. Following the same techniques, I created a rock medium and two small rocks. And so now I'm ready to export. So here for my rock large, you can see that I've set this to be at the origin and the pivot location is set in the location that I would like it to be so that I can easily rotate and scale this rock once I get it into Unity. So now that this is in place, let's do File, Export Selection. And here I'll call this just rock large. Smoothing groups is the only thing that I have enabled at this time and we'll click export selection So now let's do the same thing for this rock here You can see that I have freezed the scale so for the translate Let's just set this at zero to place this at the origin and now we will do the file export selection here And this here will be our rock underscore medium so now I'll just go through the process of exporting the rest of these rocks. And this will give us the environment assets that we need to construct our Unity project. 